All right. Well, hello. And I will direct your attention to the screen share. Um, and if anybody in this particular group needs any explanation, then I'm sorry about that, because this is the famous Stadshuset in Stockholm. And it is, uh, of, yeah, it, it might. And it houses such interesting things as the uh, the council chamber, which somebody decided was most dignified if it resembled a Viking ship, which it sort of does on purpose. So I don't know who had that idea, but it that's what you do is you sit in the Viking ship, more or less, in the council chambers. And then also there is the famous gold hall with 18 million pieces of gold and glass in its mosaics. And then we also have the famous blue hall, which, as we should all know, is the uh, site for uh, the Nobel Prize, the Nobel rituals. So, um... Why do I have a picture of Stads Huset there? It's because uh, Para International will receive um, a request from someone who is associated with, in some way, with the Stads Huset. But first, I want to take a little playtime uh, just for us, just for our characters, for them to do as they want. Um, in a relatively stress-free situation, although depending on what you do, who knows, stress can always get you. So let's, uh, let's see what life is like on an ordinary day for your characters and the kinds of things you would be doing. You can talk about what you would be doing at the, uh, the Rasta, the Rast shop, coffee place, um, if, you, if you want to. Or you could talk to me about other things that you do, uh, perhaps family or hobbies or anything else that your characters do, just so we can get a look at them during the day, during their time. So anybody can start and tell me. And that's as far as the recording will show us, because due to some sort of setting nonsense, the other people's voices could not be captured by recording. Although we perceive each other fine during play, we played out a full session and had a wonderful time, but you don't get to see it because you won't be able to hear it, which is tragic because it's a really important learning session for the group regarding inspectors and regarding a variety of principles of play. And I'm really sad that you can't actually see the learning happen. Well, I'll tell you about this session. So here in my notes for it, uh, we have, uh, I rolled a weird housewife who's concerned about an abduction from a municipal building. Now, all of this uh, just lines itself right up. The, uh, the group Para International has generated somewhat of a positive relationship with the commune, the municipality of Stockholm. And therefore, a municipal building, you know, having some sort of problem is, is wonderful. Uh, a weird housewife, well, that's kind of interesting. That means it can't be somebody who works there or is placed in the government or anything like that, but they could be married to such a person. Um, well, let's just go with the classics. Uh, the first thing you see in my notes uh, is a little arrow from weird pointing to tinfoil hat um, from the abduction, I write husband, you know, with an arrow pointing over toward the housewife. Um, and I decide that this person needs to be uh, super Swedish. So David Arnsson. And uh, then we've got the municipal building itself. Well, this is Stockholm. It can't be anything but the famous Stadhuset City Hall, um, where, where you have the uh, big city council place, which you just saw me describe in the video. So that's fantastic. Uh, a few other things. Um, so who is this wife? Uh, I decide to have a little bit of fun with this and decide that she uh, is Vera Pliskovsky, uh, now married, is Vera Pliskovsky Arneson. 
Um, and there you have it. I basically have my notions. I don't even have a special effect for the abduction or anything because it's not mentioned. It's just abduction. So one of my priorities for play this time was to get a little more relaxed and smooth and responsive regarding what the characters might be doing when they're not running around on a par international mission. I wanted them to sort of grow and breathe. We would learn a few more uh, things, non-conflictual things about characters whom they knew, uh, places that they hung out. I wanted to get an idea of where they might live around Stockholm and stuff like that. So I just asked the players, so, you know, consider yourself not in a stressed state or not in a working mode particularly, and what do you do? All of them instantly said, well, we're at the, you know, at the, at the coffee shop, we're at the the, the Rost place where, you know, Power International is, and we're there. And I'm thinking, oh, well, there goes my, my naturalistic, you know, check-in on the characters and developing their lives outside of work. I, I guess we'll have to do that some other time. So I played from there um, with the appearance of Vera Pliskovsky and there's Artisan. And there are a few details that did crop up. We got a good look at Aisha's kids. I got to play the kids and we developed sort of a range of ages and some outlooks for them and stuff as we played, which I enjoyed quite a bit. And um, the play of the social issues in Sweden among the players relative to these characters with Christopher deliberately playing an older person who is uh, sort of not the gears aren't really meshing with modern Swedish demographics and political concerns. And so, as is, I must say, naturalistically correct, that can come off as abrasive and insensitive. Um, although the point of playing this character is that he's not, and it's just kind of this social gear grinding going on. And then, of course, we have uh, Johan, who somewhat tentatively, because he understands the issues involved, of course, um, is playing, you know, a, an African immigrant to Sweden with her kids and making a life for herself and doing so quite well. Um, and yet there are also gears that may clash or have issues there. I threw my own oar in the water for this same thing when I had police show up looking for Vera, uh, who <laughs> turns out to be a, a little bit, uh, you know, the, the weirdness basically has already caused trouble by the time that she's shown up to Par International. Um, and so they have, uh, they have pursued her for her own good, you know, they're, they're not going to arrest her. They're, she's just supposed to stay in her house after harassing all these other people and the police are returning her there. Well, the different characters' response to what police are and how one behaves toward them uh, turned out to be a little bit of a thing. So I guess we did see a bit more about the viewpoints of the characters outside the context of work and more in the context of the society they live in. And it was mostly through one-liners and reactions and sometimes us kind of wondering what the other player meant by it and stuff like that. But it was a nice feel into the whole thing with Helma playing the young uh, KT as, you know, kind of face palming you know, every so often, especially when the professor lets out some terrible phrase or something like that. But anyway, we proceeded through this and the adventure itself. Now, this is what I really want to talk about. The adventure itself relies heavily, of course, on what players say when they get successful roles. We have the role's outcome of the conflict of the moment, which is very important, and who says what is a little bit nuanced. On a four, the GM gets to kind of mess with what the player says, and on a three, the player gets to upgrade or soften what the GM says. Um, five and six, the player is telling us what happened. One and two, the GM is telling us what happened, respectively success and failure in those two cases as well. So that's for the outcome of the moment, but it's very important that whenever any kind of conflictual situation 
generates clues, which could literally be anything. I mean, you could have a conflict over something very basic, and then it a, a clue comes out of it. I mean, that's fine. Um, because those roles, especially the fives and sixes, they generate franchise dice. They actually get the job done by definition. So they have to give us information, and that's player generated. So the players have kind of grasped this. They got better at it in the second session. Um, and in this one, they were more primed to do it. But I had to kind of remind people that because you succeeded in the conflict, do you get through the secret door in the, uh, you know, in the, in the council chamber, bearing in mind that I didn't put the secret door there that you don't just look at me and say, what do I see? The, the whole point is for you to generate that. I typically am not fond of games which do this. Many of them, I think, are just a whole bunch of sort of scattershot competing uh, cacophony of what's going on. But Inspectors is very nicely built for this. And in this case, I quite like the technique, but it's tricky for people to learn. It's kind of the reverse of the pool where you have to learn that you don't do it. So anyway, in the case of uh, this particular adventure, right from the start, Katie was extremely dismissive of the idea of an alien abduction. And Aisha was, you know, of course, very eager to jump on the idea that it was just like all those alien abductions. And she actually makes tinfoil hats for and she and the professor wear them, and Katie refuses. So that actually was a technology rule, by the way. And so they they have uh, proceeded to the council chamber. Uh, Katie sits away from them on the bus in from the outlying suburb because they, uh, you know, they don't want to be, Katie doesn't want to be associated with these two you know, old people with their tinfoil hats. Anyway, so they head in there, and... At one point, Yon gets a narration and is a little, he's a little bit hesitant because he knows he's messing with another player's character. What he wants to do is have Katie having been replaced, sort of retconning a bit that somehow in the intervening period that Katie had been abducted and replaced. So he wanted to go in. This was that very moment I was talking about. He wanted to go in and see that, you know, Katie is there. The real one is there. So the dialogue about this wasn't tortuous. I'm pretty familiar with these issues. And I was able to answer one question from Johan and one question from Helma. And everything went great. And the questions were this. First of all, can I do this? Does this work with the rules? And how much of the other character do I have to sort of, I mean, do I have to overwrite what Helma, you know, has done? And I said, no, you can completely leave it out exactly when it happened. It could have happened just the second we looked away, you know, a moment ago, or it could have been in place for days. We don't know. It's okay. And I also pointed out to Helma, who is concerned with, well, do I have to play my fake self too? Or what? What? what's this? And I said, no, play your own self. Your own self is lying right there. And you play that character just like you would ordinarily play her. Basically, she wakes up and right now and you start playing her. And again, you can kind of leave it in your own mind when you think the abduction took place so that you can validate any and all play that you've already done. And so actually <laughs> explaining it just now took a lot longer than it took just to answer those questions, bam, bam, in play. And they both went, oh, and we proceeded perfectly right through that into the next round of play. And Christopher picked up on, oh, replacements. And so when he got a narration, then he was able to generate a replacement oriented scenario for a couple of the NPCs. And so it, it just, went smoothly and they succeeded in their roles like gangbusters massive just like that first session they either succeeded in things like gangbusters all the way through and there were a couple of very interesting errors one thing that was very important though was that this time katie 
did not fail a stress roll. In fact, she had to make a terrifying stress roll. I think she got, I think, did she roll like three or four dice and end up with all ones or something like that? But it was an, an insane stress response. And basically it was the moment, because Helma has been feeling a little battered by these failed stress rolls for Katie, who's starting to come off as kind of a, you know, hair sticking out kind of, you know, highly reactive dits. And here she just totally was like, I'm good. And it was a nice moment for Katie, actually, in my opinion, is enjoying the, you know, the way that the characters have developed. And uh, as it turned out, I think um, all went well. They were able to stop the alien invasion and the takeover. And uh, one point, one of the players wondered whether there was a political angle that the abducted members, did they tend to be of a particular party or coalition? And I said, I'm not backstory man. You know, that's an investigative role. So, because remember, you can keep going past the franchise dice if you want. You don't have to you know, snip play the second that they make the jobs quota. So they actually ended up making a few more franchise dice this way. Um, and the player was, I can't remember which one, um, the player was quite blunt that, yes, the, the aliens and particular political interests in Sweden have uh, have been colluding. So this all turned out very well for the group. The, the, they dug, they had left previously. Um, the franchise had been battered pretty heavily for dice, and they were kind of sucking wind on par international and brought themselves up they were carrying penalties from the the previous session um and i enforced those penalties during play so you know they were really pushing themselves so those successful rolls that they made were quite fortuitous and now however they were flush and so they actually restored par international to kind of a functioning level although they didn't beef it up much um and they de-stressed themselves for the most part so that was the main thing was to say okay look we've had a couple of really arduous adventures and this one was a really big deal and we're feeling good we as people i mean our business is still small but we're respected now and we're feeling good so it was a, a nice affirming session for Power International and particularly for the characters to interact with one another, um, to have different opinions about things, to have things turn out a certain way or one um, you know, viewpoint or another is favored in this or that adventure. So I quite liked all of that and I'm sorry you missed it, but I hope that you will see some comments from the people who played and their assessment of what I have said. Um, and to ask any questions that you might like.